what's up world welcome back to charge the game podcast make sure you guys get in here subscribe to the youtube channel like the video today's topic will be about asia wilson man asia wilson has some stuff to get off her chest asia wilson delivers strong message on unwarranted caitlin clark take okay and okay guys before before we even elaborate man let's give asia wilson you know her flowers she isn't uh an out the closet hater she's an inside the closet hater uh and what she does is uh not fooling me uh i think that asia wilson is a phenomenal talent i think that asia wilson is probably the best uh wnba player i don't think her game is as a you know aesthetically pleasing to and in comparison to Kaylin Clark I mean I I just don't you know uh I feel like a lot of these WNBA players would be so likable if they just didn't come off with such entitlement that's what it is like entitlement and attitude like Asia Wilson have no problem with her uh, besides the the shade that she throws, you know, to Kayla Clark, and she likes to do this thing where she's like, "Why would I hate on you, Buki? Why would I hate on a rookie, Buki?" It's because that's what you're doing. You know I mean, I'm just gonna call it like it is, uh, and it's been that way for not just her, but a lot of veterans. And I just think that they like to throw shade, they throw backhanded compliments, and it's just not genuine. And then when you look at Kayla Clark, they wonder why people are so supportive of her. It's this thing called class. I'm not saying that Asia Wilson doesn't have class, but she just doesn't have the class that makes people feel welcome. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure she's probably a nice player to certain people. If that's your girl, I have no problem with that. But there is this thing called welcoming energy. And I just feel like these women in the WNBA don't understand that if you want to be marketable, you at least have to be approachable. Okay, guys. Uh, and I don't know if she's not approachable i like to think that she is she seems like she is she seems like she's a very passionate player but i just don't understand what takes like this come from so let's let's get into this where you know it obviously acknowledges her as a two-time mvp looks well on her way to earning her third mvp for the most part she's been balling averaging 27.2 points 11.9 rebounds 2.5 assists 1.8 steals per game that's awesome for Asia Wilson. And apparently she uh, is in this article or some type of popular magazine uh, cover of Mary Claire's Women in Sports issue. And she had a strong message for Kaylin Clark and the sudden concern over the high level of physicality in the WNBA. So you see here, Asia Wilson, uh, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, she isn't as she's not that attractive to me. Um, you know, I'm not hating. I don't want to sound like a guy. That isn't attracted to a sister because I'm black. I just don't think that she's all that to me. But that's just me. So let's get into some of the things that she was saying in this article. When people say, I'm my ancestor's wildest dream, I live that, Wilson says. I'm a product of my Jim Crow era. My grandmother couldn't walk on the University of South Carolina campus. My dad couldn't play for the Gamecocks. Now it makes sense, guys, because if I'm being honest with you guys, Obviously, we've all had grandparents, especially in the black community, um, where they went through unforeseen and unfortunate situations. And even before them, their ancestors and grandmothers and great grands went through even worse things. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It isn't pleasant to even reminisce on that. Some of the stories I've heard, you know, uh, that that is very uh, it's just very detrimental uh, that things like that even took place. Obviously, uh, you know, people, you know, still support those type of issues going on in America. But as you guys know, here at Charge the Game, man, I tend to look at sports, you know, without trying to muddy up the waters, you know, making it about like these type of topics. But I want to speak on this type of stuff because this is what sets that 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 tone, that mentality, that in that entitlement, that angry stigma that black women are tied to because they seem to you know they just rem reminisce on things like this and it makes it hard for them to receive the world in a way where people can be different races different colors and get along you know what i mean like when when i see videos and i see like uh people talking about why do the women in the WNBA seem so angry it's because they have lived through things like this and they don't know how to channel that energy. They don't know how to let that go. And when you don't know how to let that go, it never leaves you. 
and you use it as an energy source by any means necessary. It could be through your play uh, on the court. It could be through the way you interview. It could be the way that you look at a white girl like Caitlin Clark, because all she's going to do is think about those times that white people were privileged or more privileged. And some people s- seem to believe that they still are more privileged and it hinders you from certain growth. And, you know, obviously I grew up in Mississippi. I mean, I've seen some things. I even been called some things, but I feel like when you are spiritually aligned with God and, or whoever you may believe in, he will steer you in the direction of righteousness, man. And you don't conduct or carry yourself like this. I saw my grandmother's, uh, hair, uh, she went to a beauty school or something like that or to, to a cosmetology school. And it literally said for colors on there. That really broke my heart. But my grandmother raised me, man. My grandmother, you know, I don't know what her grandmother raised her to do. My grandmother really raised me to be a righteous person. All Even though she probably went through way worse segregated times than I've ever, uh, that I could just, you know, fathom to imagine. I just look at things like that. And the one thing that gave me a different look on racism period was my time serving in the United States army where anybody who's a veteran out there, shout out to anybody that's Navy coast guard, Marines, air force, chair force, <laughs> not just playing air force army and all that good stuff, man. Because what it does is it's like sports, you know, you may be raised a certain way to look at things until life carries you. And what life did to me was put me around a group of brothers. A lot of people like to compare me to like an uncle Tom and this and that, or they might say I'm a sellout. No, I didn't sell out. I aligned with God because God allowed me to be around a group of brothers that, you know, I could understand Asian, Vietnamese, freaking African people from all over the world that I'm serving in the military with and uh going on missions and everything and we created a bond and it taught me how to love in a different way that most people would never probably ever get to get to see and it's truly a beautiful thing so i just look at everything that i went through in the military and now that i'm on the civilian side i just have a different approach you know what i'm saying like I, i know that most people will disagree with their take or they might not care but that's just my truth and I think that when it comes to these women in the WNBA, this is why, you know, the, the attitudes are. So now that the history lesson is over, <laughs> sorry, y'all. Now that the history lesson is over, let's talk about what she had to say about my dog, Caitlin Clark. I felt like I was always mentally tired in that whole whirlwind of people constantly saying, Aja, or is it Asia? You're only known because of Caitlin Clark. We're only here because of Caitlin. Oh, and that's crazy because these, these athletes like to act like they don't like to, uh, Look at what people are saying online, but this is clear evidence. Obviously, you're reading it. Oh, she goes on to say, and that's great. I get that, but while you're here, I'm not going to let you discredit me or the work that I've done or my teammates or the people who came before have done. Okay, and that's that attitude shit right there, right? Because Aja, Asia, Wilson, you just don't see anybody else in the WNBA. It's crazy because there are just... There may not be a lot, but there are Caucasian women in the WNBA. There's also other race women in the WNBA. You just don't seem to see like this type of energy coming from them. They're being overlooked. They're not getting the credit. And I guarantee if they were to be presented with the same questions, I don't know if they will probably have like this same energy. I think I've seen like one or two. If if y'all drop the names in the comments, I'll, I'll go research and look it up. But I just feel like it's just, I mean, and like I said, this is this this all boils down to one simple thing: upbringing, right? Maybe you know these other race of people didn't have to experience their grandmother's stories like me and Aja Wilson had to. But I think that it's what you learn from the stories being taught taught to you, and how they're being taught to you. The difference is just your mindset and how you choose to navigate throughout life, and that's just the that's just the bottom line, man. Like we can't always use our past as an excuse to act a certain way or have certain type of energies you know what i mean i see this this shit every day i mean seriously guys i see this shit every day i mean I, i'm i served in the military guys and i'm in a lot of group messages and when i tell you guys i've never seen so many people get mad about even like politics like 
I just do. Who cares? Like, oh, you're not down with us. I see. I see people come out and are literally afraid to show love to uh, somebody, Trump, anybody in the Republican Party, because, you know, the black community looks down on it. And I'm just like, the problem with this is there are so many people who actually agree, you know, with the Republicans that they're afraid to come out because they don't want to be attacked. And I just feel like, man, like who, what rule, who made this rule? Like, honestly, guys, I'm not trying to get off topic, though. <laughs> Aja Wilson goes on to say, as for players getting beat up on, this is a physical sport. I know you think I'm a lady and that I cannot fight and get down and gritty in the post, but I can it's my job and I love what I do. No, I definitely think you can get down in the post. You know what I'm saying? I I, I done seen Aja, Aja Wilson attack the rim. I done seen her aggressiveness. I think that she definitely walks around with that type of energy. So, I mean, I'm not going to say that we think that you're incapable of it. I mean, obviously, you, you're playing a physical sport. Uh, we see how you guys uh, go at Caitlin Clark. So, we know that you guys can get physical. At the end of the day, I just feel like Asia Wilson wanted this to be out because she wants this type of reputation behind her name. Um, you know, and that's pretty much the the mindset of most of these women in the WNBA. With so many news eyes on the league, Wilson is also seeing a lot of ill-informed takes, especially the rhetoric that veterans hate the rookies. Now, I'm quite sure that's the truth. Uh, you guys really do not like Kaylin Clark, so let's not go there, uh, Asia Wilson, all right? Like, I'm going to give you credit when credit's due, but these veterans really are fucking jealous of Kaylin Clark, and it makes no sense. It's clear as day. If you guys were not jealous of these uh, rookies or AKA Kaitlyn Clark, why are there so many African-American men athletes on TV defending Kaitlyn Clark? Do you guys think that they're just doing it because they want to start a controversy or do you guys think that they see what what's going on? The truth of the matter is you guys despise Kaitlyn Clark because she just have what you guys want. And that's the attention of the American people. But you want to win the American people over by saying like, I'm not, I know y'all think I'm like a lady, but I can fight. You're pretty much discrediting yourself as a lady. Like you literally are contradicting yourself. Nobody wants to get behind that masculine ass energy. I'm sorry. Like, yes, your grandmother went through things. Maybe you went through things, but we all do. We all do at the bottom line. I just feel like even with that magazine article, was that something that you just really had to say though? Like seriously, was that something that you really had to say? I get a biography. That's different biography people really want to know what you went through they got the camera crew out maybe you're going back to your old house that you grew up in that's something different but you definitely have thrown shade at Kaylin Clark and any chance that you get you will not acknowledge her I don't I think that Angel Reese is the rookie that you probably like love and favor because I saw you embrace her I've never seen you do that to Kaylin Clark is it because of what you and your grandmother went through in South Carolina or is it because like jealousy like you, what well like what is it you know what I'm saying like make it make sense we have all been rookies before so why would i hate on a rookie class now all of a sudden <laughs> who do you think you're fooling i mean like all y'all are saying the same thing like why would i gotta hate i've been a rookie before yes it is easy to hate on a rookie making 28 million dollars from nike and not really caring about that weak WNBA check it's also easy to hate on somebody that has a fan base that fills the stadiums up every night i mean you get you still not you still aren't doing it on your own and on top of that she topped you in the wnba all-star voting you are literally i think she was number three last time i checked i don't know if that's uh if she's felt falling anywhere you know further down the list i don't know but that is a lot of things it's easy to hate on this rookie for because all of y'all are hating on her for the same things i just listed you guys want to say, I've been in the, that same spot. I've been in that heat. I've been in that seat. So for me as a veteran to hear that there are these men talking gibberish and garbage and trying to pit us against uh, uh, each other, it really kind of stung me a little bit. No, it stung you a lot because if it stung you a little bit, you wouldn't have bought it up in this interview, right? Am I right or wrong? Y'all let me know in the comment section. She is still holding on to resentment and it's clear as day, guys. It's clear as day. At the end of the day, man, Asia Wilson, you a hater too. That's all good, baby. It's all good. We know. We know. We know. Y'all don't like this little white girl taking all that shine. And it's making y'all mad because at the end of the day, you guys may be veterans, but the things that she's doing as a rookie, I still think that she will some sooner or later surpass 
what we see like now. I mean, I just see it as a rookie, and I'm just like, wow. I don't see Asia Wilson dropping dimes like that either, like the passes. I, I love the way Aja Wilson attacks, though. I think that she has a good bag for the most part. An all-around bag, I will give her that. I do like the fact that she's chippy. I do like the fact that she's passionate. See, she has passion that I can get behind. And this isn't to just go all in on Asia Wilson. It's just the facts, bro. Like, she's jealous. So you guys tell me what y'all think. Weigh in with the Asia Wilson comments, man. I'm here for it. I want to hear everybody's thoughts, comments. Make sure you drop them in that comment section, guys. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Yeah.